So the Celtics and the Pacers played game one of their series yesterday, and it was fun for me. I, I cannot lie. Um, if y'all are a subscriber of this channel, I actually uploaded a video last night um, recapping. Not even recapping. It was just highlights of the live stream, the playback stream that we had on Let's Keep It A Buck. Watching the game live, and oh my goodness, it was one of the funnest watching experiences y'all will ever see, even if you like the Celtics or not. It was just pure in utter chaos. There is no other way to describe it. But nevertheless, yesterday, the game happened, and it went to overtime. 133-128. Boston Celtics win by five. Um, on the Pacers side of things, Tyrese Halliburton had 25 points, 10 assists. Uh, pretty good efficiency as well. Miles Turner was cooking the fuck out of us. He had 23 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists, along with 2 blocks. Pascal Siakam showed up as well. 24 points, 12 rebounds, 7 assists. Aaron Naismith. Long story. OB Toppin was looking really good in the first half too, dog. I can't lie. OB Toppin was, pu was, was making pull-up jumpers. And I was like, okay, these guys are pretty good. These guys are pretty good. Um, over on the Celtics side of things, Jason Tatum ended up having 36 points, 12 rebounds, 4 assists, 3 steals. Uh, 26 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists, 3 steals from Jalen Brown. Um, Drew Holiday. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, man. Easily, easily the best Drew Holiday playoff game so far. And I know Milwaukee Bucks fans looking jealous as fuck right now. 28 points, 8 assists, 7 rebounds, and 3 steals. And it was a fun game. First of all, first of all, let me say that. It was, it was such a fun game. It was the game that I expected going up against the Indiana Pacers. The score, not so much, but just the style of play being played. Uh, these are two of the top three, I believe just legitimately the top two offenses in the league, both in the season and in the playoffs. I would probably need to double check right now. Uh, 2024, the team who had the best offensive rating was the Boston Celtics, and then second was the Indiana Pacers right behind them. And then in the playoffs, I believe it's the same thing, except flipped. I actually think Indiana has a stronger offense than the Boston Celtics. Uh, let me go ahead and go to 2024 playoff summary. Go to advanced stats, and boom. Yes, top, so the top two offenses in the league going at it. It was a fun game. Um, I do have, just for the record, I do have the Celtics winning this one in five games. Listen, man, we only got two rounds left in the NBA playoffs, but there is still enough time to win some money using the sponsor of this video, Prize Picks, my personal favorite way to play daily fantasy sports. And I'm going to show y'all the process of making the lineup today so you can possibly win some money on here. Shout out to the MLB season. It just started right here. You can also make some picks using them. But we are NBA basketball heads over here, so we're going to go to the NBA section. These are their popular picks of the day, but they got a bunch of players and a bunch of of stats to choose from listen my guy Jason Tatum has not been consistent as far as the score in these playoffs so far but he has been a consistent rebounder so I'm actually going to take the more on Jason Tatum's rebounds someone has to score on the Indiana Pacers and they are a really high powered offense and I think Tyrese can get 20 today I'm gonna go ahead and put ten dollars on this lineup right here press submit lineup and boom that is how you make a lineup on prize picks and thanks to our friends over at prize picks if you guys use code SLZ you guys can get a hundred percent deposit match up to one hundred dollars on your first deposit links to everything will be in the description they got an app they got a website you just got to sign up but not back to the video but listen the discourse is discoursing and as we like to do on this channel, I, I like to talk about the discourse regarding certain things around the NBA, around certain players, around certain teams. And especially now, I don't give a fuck if it's two videos in 24 hours. Uh, yeah, this is my team, and I just came off of a great win. I, listen, <laughs> first of all, first of all, let me, let me tell y'all this, man. I might be saying, B-Soul's great win after going to OT against the 6 seed Indiana Pacers? I think that was a necessary win for the Boston Celtics, for real, for real. I think that was a, the win that reinvigorated me. You know what I'm saying? It's been a while since we got a, a clutch, dirty game win. You know what I'm saying? An ugly win. You know, a game that goes into the clutch. It's a back and forth. We may even blow a lead, but you know what I'm saying? A, a palms get sweaty. Knees weak. Arms are heavy. There's vomit on his sweater already. Mom spaghetti ass fourth quarter close game. And we came out on top. Um, it was fun. It was fun. I, th I think the Celtics team needed that. Um, but the discourse this morning, whew, 
the discourse this whole playoffs around the Boston Celtics and Jason Tatum. Let me let me start off with Jason Tatum. It's cooked. It's cooked. I can't lie, dude. Um, the hate in your heart has been fueled too much to the point where I legitimately think Jason Tatum haters have higher standards for Jason Tatum than actual Jason Tatum fans. Than actual Jason Tatum fans. Because in this game, because we watched it live. Listen, Jason Tatum was not playing perfect basketball. All right, he he missed a couple clutch shots. There was there was one wide open three that he missed. I believe there was one like put back that he missed, and then that was that there was that Dirk fadeaway that he took at the end of the game that honestly did not make sense. Um, and then in, yeah, in overtime it, it was roughly around the same thing. I think he missed like one shot, but yeah, he he did not play perfect. Let me let me tell y'all that right now. But in a game. Where he had 36 points, 12 rebounds, 4 assists, and 3 steals. In a game where he had the the game-saving stop. I understand the the whole thing is Jalen Brown's shot at the end, but let's not act like Jason Tatum didn't switch on Tyrese Halliburton and clamp him up and had a really good contest on that last three to force overtime. Let's not act like that didn't happen. Then in in, in an OT... Where he had what ten points in an OT where um, JT had that that crazy and one to put them up by one, and then coming down the court pick and pop three all net. That's Jason Tatum with the game on the line, right? That like that's literally what y'all wanted. But here we are, and, and it'd be one thing if we're just criticizing, yo, you know, J- Jason Tatum still needs to tee up in the fourth quarter. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I didn't like his 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 execution, but the backlash 24 hours later, feeling like this motherfucker went two of 17 from the field. Um, you know what I'm saying? Went oh of five in the clutch. You know, didn't impact the game in other ways. Is fucking ridiculous. Like I'm I'm literally to a point where for Jason Tatum to have a good game to y'all. It would literally need to be, what, 35 to 40 points, right? He would probably need to grab 7 to 10 rebounds, if not more. You're probably looking at 5 to 7 assists. You're probably looking at 2 steals, maybe a block. Obviously, the efficiency has to be there. So, more than 50% from the field, closer to 40% from 3, you know, 80 plus percent from the line. Impact the game on both sides of the court and win the game. Possibly hit some clutch shots. And at that point, if that's the standard for Jason Tatum to impress y'all, those are GOAT standards. Like not 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 even top top five player in the league standards. Not even, you know what I'm saying? Um all time, let alone all time great goat. Like that, those are goat standards, bro. If that's what it takes to impress y'all, listen. Either y'all actually think Jason Tatum is better than what y'all think is because you are holding him to higher standards than he deserves, or or you truly don't give a fuck about how good he plays and how he proves you wrong. You just don't like the motherfucker, dog. That's a, that's the theme in twenty twenty four to me. I think a lot of y'all try to try to mask y'all's biases and dislikes with objectivity, quote-unquote, and being unbiased with shit. If you don't like someone, literally just say that. Literally no one cares. Just say that you don't like Jason Tatum. Say he's fucking boring. You know what I'm saying? Say, say, I don't know, you just don't like the Celtics. You just don't like the Celtics. Um, And it really has nothing to do with Jason Tatum. It's just you don't like the Celtics, which I feel like a lot of y'all... Dude, that's, that, that's the reason why y'all hate him. Because y'all don't like the Celtics. So that's one. For the team as a whole, I also don't know what y'all want. <laughs> I, can't, I, I, I can't lie. I do not know what y'all want from this team. Okay? I understand the East is the weaker conference and the injuries that the Boston Celtics faced um, with the Cleveland Cavaliers and Donovan Mitchell and Jared Allen not being there, with the Miami Heat and Jimmy Butler and at the end of the series, Jaime Hawkins not being there, is obviously not comp, all right? It compared, Especially compared to the Western Conference, that's definitely unfortunate. 
But also, given that situation, I understand they've been giving up game twos, right? That's been the main thing. But they have been taking care of business. They've been blowing out these teams by 20, by 15 plus. I believe the margin of victory for the first two rounds is literally like 15 to 20. You know what I'm saying? Um, and they're, they're doing what they're supposed to do, playing against inferior teams that are hobbled. For me, it would be much more concerning if we were going up against these teams and these series were going to six to seven games, but just giving up one game because the Miami had literally the best shooting performance in their uh, franchise's history in a game where... I can't lie, I believe we were just off and, and Donovan Mitchell was going crazy and then the rest of the series, we take care of business. I still personally believe that that's fine. Like, that that's fine, dog. That's fine. I don't think this team is a super team, so maybe that's just my expectations for this team. But I truly don't think this is, super, this is a super team. The, the forced narrative that this team is a super team to me is corny as fuck. I think y'all calling the Boston Celtics a super team is a setup because y'all know damn well that there are actually teams in the Western Conference that when this team faces, that aren't super teams in themselves, are going to be comp for them. If if they face up against Minnesota, to me, that's a toss-up series. If they face Denver, I would even favor Denver in that series. If they, if they faced OKC, I understand I put up a poll and after the loss, it was like 2070 in favor of Boston or whatever, 2080. I think that's still a toss up. And y'all are fucking lying to me. Dallas, I would favor the Celtics. I can't lie, I would favor the Celtics. But I can't think of a super team that had so many motherfuckers that could beat them. You know what I'm saying? Like, to me, the term super team, and this is what I've been talking about on this channel, is reserved for world beaters. It's reserved for what the fuck, how the fuck do you stop this team ass teams? And. This team is beatable. It just it just is. So so y'all holding this team to higher standards than what it should be is some of the craziest setups I've ever seen for fucking slander. Uh same thing with Tatum, same thing with Brown. I will say this, and this is how I know the narrative is shifting a little bit. <laughs> this is how I know y'all are in denial about what the fuck is going on. <laughs> They got y'all praising. They, they got y'all praising Jalen Brown now. <laughs> hey, hey, they got y'all praising Jalen Brown now. I think that's a step in the right direction. Cause a year ago, boy, the conversations around Jalen Brown, ooh, they were toxic as fuck. He was overpaid. Ah, 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 At least we progressed the dick suck to the point where we're giving this guy credit for the play that he got. We're giving this guy credit for being a, a, a good to great shot creator in the defense that he plays. So I think that is a step in the right direction, y'all. I, I, I like that. I, I, I like that right there. That's a step in the right direction. But I just, I just don't know necessarily what y'all want to see from this team. This team, like I've been saying over these last couple of weeks, has been in a lose-lose situation. You either blow out teams and there's no comp. This team isn't battle-tested. You either play close with these teams, and now it's, uh, uh, you know, it, sh it shouldn't it shouldn't be this close. Y'all should be blowing these teams out. You know what I'm saying? And even with the way that we win, with the way that we win, literally these last two games, because prior to these last two games, the, the conversation has been, yo, the Boston Celtics, they're not battle-tested. There's no comp. You know what I'm saying? They, they don't have enough... Uh, you know, experience against go, going up against teams that that'll give them a challenge. So these last two games against the Cavs, the the last game against the Cavs, it was a close game throughout the whole game, and then the Celtics blew it out in the fourth quarter, and that was still a problem. Cause oh my God, why why were the Cavs even that close for the majority of the game? Oh my God, even though we ended up winning by thirteen. So literally, if if what y'all wanted us to do in Indiana happened, happened. It would have been a problem last night. But against Indiana last night, it kept us we, we kept it close. You know what I'm saying? We got into clutch time and we performed as a team. I don't give a fuck about Jason Tatum right now. As a team, we performed. We executed defensively. Got the stops that we needed. Now it's a problem 
when we win when the game is close to? So what the fuck do y'all want? Like, <laughs> I can't lie, dude. This, this is such a lose-lose situation for this team. And now we're nitpicking how Jason Tatum wins in these performances as well. I will say this, though. I, I If there is one thing I'll be a little bit progressive about and lean towards y'all about when it comes to the Boston Celtics and how they should build around, I think thinking about Jason Tatum as a Kobe type of player to build around in terms of, not necessarily Kobe, but the way Minnesota builds around Anthony Edwards as a shot creator, as a playmaker, um, as a perimeter offensive threat, the way you build around Anthony Edwards is not the way you build around Jason Tatum. I think the way you build around Jason Tatum, because he's versatile enough um, on both ends of the court, because in my opinion, he has progressed enough as a playmaker and as a passer to build around like this, is you kind of play him and build around him the same way the Cavs and, and the Heat, honestly, built around LeBron James and the way the Bucks have built around Giannis. Um, yeah, but the, how the Bucks have built around Giannis. And that is make Jason Tatum more so of a play finisher I think you make Jason Tatum more of a um, a guy that affects the game in, in multiple ways, but when it when it when it's time to close out, give the ball to Jalen Brown. You know what I'm saying? The, the same way we were having conversations around, you know, who's the real Batman in Milwaukee? Is it uh, what you call it? Is it is it Giannis or Chris Middleton? Oh, well, well, the ball goes to Chris Middleton down the stretch, so Chris Middleton is the Batman. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with Jokic and Jamal. You know what I'm saying? I do think there's there's a there's a play here where just hey, listen, just don't force Jason Tatum to be Mr. Clutch down the stretch because there is a guy on the team. There are actually a couple guys on the team that's just gonna be better at that because of X, Y, and Z. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like even though Jason Tatum is a traditionally what what we've seen as a closer, what we've seen as a Paul George. You know what I'm saying? KD, Paul Pierce uh, mold. I think that's actually the wrong way to build around him at this point in his career because I do think he's versatile enough to be the dude that he may not be closing out games. When you want that go-to bucket down the stretch, he may not be that guy. But he will be so effective throughout the course of the game that you can still build around him as your best player, be hell of effective as long as you got proper closers around him. And I do think when you got Jalen Brown, when you got Al Hor, uh, not Al Horford, well, Al Horford, <laughs> game six, uh, what was it game five against Cleveland did look really good. But when you got a Jalen Brown next to him, when you got a Derek White next to him playing the way that they've been playing, I do think you can you can play that play style. I do think you can play that play style, and I think that would just honestly go into how we play Jason Tatum. This season, like I, this season, I don't, even though Jason Tatum is average 27, like his role is so different than what it has been over the last two years. And it's honestly refreshing. And I think it's throwing y'all off because again, y'all, y'all are looking for that closer, that, that Anthony Edwards style of play. But the way the Celtics play Jason Tatum is just not like that. It's just not like that. And I do think it's actually the best utilization of his skills um, and the things that he's bad at, because I will just keep it a stack. In the clutch, because there I, I spent um, time a couple weeks ago looking at his clutch stats over the last four years. Jason Tatum's just not good in the clutch. Like I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep it a sack. Like his percentages are low, um, both in the regular season and in the playoffs. Um, is if it's not as bad, it's not as bad. He can still be an extremely effective player. Hell, he can still be the best player, but just in those you know last couple stretches, just don't put it in his hands. And I think we'll we'll all be sad. And I think last night. Was a was a big example of that. Even though last night he was still clutching OT, but in in regulation, I think we all know what I mean when I say that. Um, I am actually more optimistic about this team after last night's win, because again, I think it showed that I think for the first time in the playoffs, we got a gritty ass win. We got a gritty ass win um, against Indiana, and also shout out to Indiana. I think you know the 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 conversation today has been. You know, the Boston Celtics being buns for keeping it close against Indiana. But Indiana's a really good team. I'm going to keep it a stack. You know, the, I think the main reason why they fell down to the sixth seed was because Tyrese Tyrese wasn't playing, was, was playing really hobbled. I can't lie. He was playing really hobbled. 
But as the playoffs have progressed, I don't know if he's just pushing through it. I don't know if... I don't know. I don't know if he's just pushing through it or actually getting healthier. But when Tyrese Halliburton is playing like healthy Tyrese Halliburton, which I'm going to keep it a stack over these last, what, three, four games against New York and in this game, that has looked like pretty healthy Tyrese Halliburton to me. The Indiana Pacers are a completely different team. You know what I'm saying? They were already good pre play uh pre trade deadline. Excuse me. And then they got Pascal Siakam. I think this team is really good. I think the team th- this team is really good. And mind you, this is a team that has been because of the Pascal Siakam trade, their core, let's keep it a stack, has been put together in just one half of the season. So I am really, really impressed with the Indiana Pacers. I still do have this going to five games because I feel like even though Indiana can push the pace um, and it will be a a high offense series, I do think this being a back-and-forth style of game actually favors the Celtics in that department because the Celtics actually want to go out and play with pace. The Celtics want to go out there and push the tempo. At least that's what Joe Mazzulla wants to do. And if that's Indiana's game plan... And the game plan is not necessarily um, stopping Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and Al Horford and Derek White and Drew Holiday, but just trying to outscore the other team. When you got another elite offense out there with also a pretty good defense, if not an elite defense in the Boston Celtics, I personally think that's just a recipe for disaster for the Indiana Pacers. But we will see. We will see. It might It might be one of those, listen, man, it, it goes to five games, but the five games are really competitive for the most part. We'll see how it goes. Uh, shout out to my C's, man. Shout out to my C's. My confidence level with this team winning a championship right now is at a 70%, especially after Denver got taken out as well. Um the, the Western Conference Finals game one is tonight, so we will be watching that on playback as well. Uh, I saw some of y'all asking where uh, we watched the gameplay from last night. And with that being said, let me know what y'all think about this conversation, man. I think Jason Tatum discourse is just taking a, a, a complete left turn. Um, you know, I, I, I personally have Jason Tatum in that 6 to 12 range. And I just think for a guy in that 6 to 12 range, he's not getting held. He's getting held higher. He's getting held to higher standards than the guys in that 6 through 12 range, in my opinion. But nevertheless, I'm on, man. Peace.